हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज़ पार्ट नाइन ऑफ चैप्टर नंबर वन साइकोलॉजी क्लास प्लस टू एंड द टॉपिक्स दैट विल बी कवर्ड इन दिस पार्ट आर टाइप्स ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस टेस्ट्स कल्चर एंड इंटेलिजेंस एंड इंटेलिजेंस इन इंडियन ट्रेडिशन एज यू हैव ऑलरेडी डन दैट दीज इंटेलिजेंस टेस्ट दे आर डिवाइडेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ लैंग्वेज एंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ कल्चर Now, if we talk about intelligence tests on the basis of administration, they are divided into two categories. One is individual test, and the other is group test. Individual test, as the name suggests, can be administered to one person at a time. All right, and it requires test administrator to establish a rapport with the subject. Okay, now the test administrator is one who takes the test, and the subject is one who gives the test. So, the test administrator has to form a rapport. with his subject he has to understand his feelings his emotions all right uh, before conducting the test that is rapport formation and such tests they allow people to answer orally or in written form or they have to manipulate objects they have to change the objects basically such tests they are called performance tests and example is binet simon tests now group tests they can be administered to several persons simultaneously that's why they are called group tests but they do not allow an opportunity to be familiar with subjects feelings why because it is very difficult for the administrator to be familiar with the feelings of all the people in the group so uh, it is very difficult basically for the administrator to establish a rapport and such tests they generally seek written answers usually in a multiple choice format an example is terman's group tests intelligence tests on the basis of language are divided into three categories verbal test non verbal test and performance test now verbal test as the name suggests it requires subject to give verbal responses either orally or in a written form therefore verbal tests are meant for literate people only only educated people can do verbal tests an example is eg mat that is journal mental ability test and non verbal tests they use pictures or illustrations as test items an example is rpm that is raven's progressive matrices and you can see it in the picture this is one of the item item from rpm and in this test basically the subject has to complete the pattern by choosing from six alternative figures so uh, you can see that uh, the above pattern can be completed by placing option number 4 so option number 4 is the correct answer all right this option will complete the given pattern and performance tests they require subject to manipulate objects and other materials to perform a task basically written language is not necessary for answering the items and example here is coe's block design or there are other examples also for example alexander's pass along test these are performance tests basically uh, they contain a number of wooden blocks and the subject is asked to arrange the blocks within a time period to produce a given design and the major advantage of performance tests is that they can be easily administered to persons from different cultures all right now if we talk about intelligence tests on the basis of culture they are divided into culture fair tests and culture bias test now culture fair tests they are basically equally fair to all cultural groups and this fairness is related to a lack of bias in the interpretation or use of a test to classify or diagnose means same methods of interpretation and same methods of diagnosis are used to assess people across all the cultures so that's why they are called culture fair tests but in culture bias tests basically if we talk about bias in psychometric test bias is said to occur when a test yields higher or lower scores on average when it is administered to specific criterion group such as people of a particular race or sex then when administered to an average population sample now for example if the test is developed in america all right so american people will 
very easily do that test they will be able to understand those instructions all right and uh, they will perform well on such tests on the other hand such items will not be able to uh, judge people from other culture appropriately such items basically do not respect the cultural perspectives of other um, cultures all right the norms for these tests are drawn from western cultural groups only okay so such tests are called cultural biased tests and it is nearly impossible to design a culture fair test okay now the next topic is intelligence testing in india and sm mohsin made a pioneering attempt in constructing an intelligence test in hindi in year 1930 and ch rais attempted to standardize binis test in urdu and punjabi whereas mahal nobis attempted to standardize binis test in bengali and attempts were also made by indian researchers to develop indian norms for some western tests including rpm WAIS Alexander's pass along test cube construction and coarse blo block design so long and mehta prepared a mental measurement handbook listing out 103 tests of intelligence in india that were available in various languages all right and such tests indian tests they are documented in the national library of educational psychological tests at ncert and this is the list of some tests developed in india verbal tests and performance tests now the next topic is culture and intelligence as we all know that culture is a collective system of customs beliefs attitudes and achievements in art and literature and it provides a context for intelligence to develop but according to vygotsky a russian psychologist he argued that culture provides a social context in which people live grow and understand the world around them and vygotsky also believed that cultures like individuals have a life of their own they grow and change and in such processes they specify what will be the end product of successful intellectual development and according to him however all the elementary mental functions such as crying attending to mother's voice sensitivity to smells walking and running they all are universal means children all across the world they follow the same activities but the manner in which higher mental functions such as problem solving and thinking operate they are largely culture produced means the way a child solves a particular problem or the way a child thinks that is basically the product of that culture in which he is living all right and basically technologically advanced societies they adopt child rearing practices that develop skills of generalization and abstraction and mental manipulation among children these societies they promote a behavior which is called technological intelligence in which people are well versed in skills of attention observation analysis performance speed and achievement all right and technological intelligence is not so valued in asian and african societies the qualities and skills regarded as intelligent actions in non western cultures are sharply different all right in addition to cognitive competences that is very specific to the individual the non western cultures they look for skills that relate to others in society so in non western cultures intelligence is not all about having cognitive abilities not all about having the ability to solve problems or ability to manipulate things it is basically intelligence is basically dealing with people dealing with people in the society how to deal in society that is also intelligence according to uh, non western countries now next topic is intelligence in indian tradition as we talked about uh, intellectual intelligence in western countries in indian tradition intelligence can be viewed as integral intelligence which gives emphasis on connectivity with social world indian thinkers they view intelligence from a holistic point of view where equal attention is paid to cognitive and non cognitive processes as well as their integration so 
according to indian tradition intelligence is not just having the ability to reason to think to judge it is basically the ability to deal with society it is basically the integration of both cognitive and non cognitive processes so the word that is used in indian tradition to represent intelligence is buddhi that is sanskrit word all right and buddhi according to jp das it includes such skills as mental effort determined action feelings and opinions along with cognitive competence such as knowledge discrimination and understanding all right so buddhi is the knowledge of one's own self based on conscience will and desire okay so the idea of buddhi has effective and motivational components besides a strong cognitive component so this is uh, intelligence in indian tradition so these are basically the facets of intelligence in the indian tradition all right these competencies are identified as, as facets of intelligence in the indian tradition so there are basically four facets four sides of intelligence that should be there in an individual to be an intellectual person to be an intelligent person so first is cognitive competence or co cognitive capacity that is sensitivity to context understanding discrimination problem solving and effective communication so one should be able to understand things solve various problems he should be able to discriminate between right and wrong and he should have effective communication skills all right and social competence is basically skill for respecting social order commitment for elders the young and the needy concern about others recognizing others perspective so that is social competence the third competence is emotional competence which means self regulation and self monitoring of emotions honesty politeness good conduct and self evaluation means one should be able to deal with one's own emotions he should have the ability to regulate his own emotions an intelligent person must know how and when to show his emotions and he should be able to evaluate his behavior also and now the fourth and the last competence is entrepreneurial competence which means commitment persistence patience hard work vigilance and goal directed behavior means an intelligent person must be committed towards his goal all right intelligent person will always be committed towards his goal he sh he will be persistent he will be continuously working hard to achieve his goal he should be patient all right he will be hard working also and he will be vigilant vigilant means he will be aware of what is wrong and what is right all right and his behavior is always goal directed he will always do various uh, tasks various activities to achieve his goal so these are the four facets of intelligence in indian tradition and this is all for today i hope these topics are clear to you we will meet once again in the next part of this video that will be the last part and in the last part we will study about emotional intelligence creativity and the relationship between creativity and intelligence till then take care thank you